through the next three press conferences of the media conference Super 2012. Now it's up to Fujifilm to announce their latest product news and latest news regarding their participation at Super 2012. I would like to introduce you, I guess it's not really necessary to introduce you, but it's very important. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to the uh, Fujifilm Creed Reaper 2012 press conference. Uh, as Monica said, my name is Graham Leeson, um, responsible for communications for the graphic systems business uh, in Europe. Um, and I'm delighted to uh, introduce proceedings today. It's worth noting that you are officially halfway through this um, uh, mega press event, so congratulations for getting that far. Um, we hope that we make the, the next hour painless and newsworthy, and in fact, we have eight new major product announcements to make. <laughs> so, by way of introduction, I just wanted to explain our aims for today. Firstly, um, particularly in, in light of the turmoil in the market uh, in the last six months in particular, we'd like to explain the strategic importance of the graphic arts business of Fujifilm and the level of investment we're making in this particular industry. Secondly, we want to explain our strategy for growth and introduce new products in Group 2012 that are the result of these immediate investments. Thirdly, we want to demonstrate how these new solutions will help printers improve their businesses and give them the power to succeed. So our agenda for the next hour um, is, is, is uh, outlined here, and I'll just run through our speakers that we have for you today. So firstly, we'll welcome Raisa Masui, who's Senior Vice President of the Graphics Division here in Europe, who will explain our graphic arts vision and strategies. <laughs> Secondly, uh, I'll be introducing Yaki Kawai, who's Global Product Planning Manager for the Digital Printing uh, Business from our Fujifilm Corporation in Tokyo. And he will cover our digital index strategy and implementation. A couple of exciting new announcements in that particular presentation. Then we'll move on to workflow. And John Davis, our European Business Strategy Manager, uh, will cover our workflow development. And again, we have some exciting announcements there. And I'm sure you'll agree that once we finish that presentation, you will agree that XMF, our, our major workflow product, is, is one of the most powerful on the market. Finally, Tony Carr, Marketing Support Manager for Drupa, will cover our offset and flexo portfolios, demonstrating that we're not only in, uh, investing in uh, digital technologies, but also continuing to improve and expand our traditional offset portfolios. Tony will also give you a, a quick overview of the Drupa stand and I'll be highlighting it here. Most of the information in the presentation is new, but to help you, we've included a little flash on the, uh, on the slide, so when that comes up, you'll know that's something that we haven't announced before, and it relates to something in your press pack. Another uh, li little um, additional uh, point of housekeeping, we will be videoing this press conference, so if any of you want to make use of that afterwards, and I will talk, talk to myself, or one of the AD2. So I'll be back in roughly 40 minutes, uh, maybe 45 minutes, um, to handle the Q&A session. So let's begin by uh, introducing Ray Tosu, Senior Vice President of the Graphics Division here in Europe, to come to start the proceedings. Thank you, Graham, for introducing me. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you here and extend my gratitude to your attendance and to the press conference today. My name is Brett Masui and I am responsible for your graphic business. On behalf of Fujifilm, I am going to share briefly our global vision, performance and strategy of the Fujifilm graphic business, which will highly reflect the direction and future growth in supporting the printing industry. Each of the speakers following me will focus on a specific segment and product announcements for our exhibition in the product of Fujifilm's strategic business plan is known internally as Vision 80. This diagram shows six main business domains of Fujifilm, which represent areas which have strategic importance to our company. 
This business remains to represent the growth areas for this world. Among these six business domains, the credit card business contributes to around 10% of the entire company's sales turnover, making it one of our largest business divisions. As a result, the graphic systems business has a considerable focus on R&D resources, <coughs> continued investment in manufacturing sites located in Asia, Americas, and Europe, and globally established and developed sales channels. Although the printing industry as a well, whole uh, has experienced some reductions in total market size, Fujifilm's continued strategic investment in R&D and product innovation have created a sustainable, profitable, and growing business division. Each part of this chart is showing yearly sales turnover of the division from fiscal year 2008 to August 2013. As this is a global media event, we have chosen to utilize US dollars to communicate the current and expected business results. As has been shown, uh, Kujifil is experiencing an annual sales growth from graphic division and has a strong portfolio of new product technologies, which my colleagues will be revealing shortly, which allow us to anticipate year-over-year year growth through 2013. We would like to point out that each film is investing over 70% of its annual sales in R&D. This level of sustained year-over-year -year commitment to R&D is what allows each film to develop the market-leading solutions that drives our continued business growth and profitability. This slide describes the global vision of Fujifilm graphic systems business division. This guides our R&D manufacturing and sales organizations into a common direction and focus allowing us to achieve our results. Our overarching aim is to enhance the quality of life of people worldwide through the enhancement of the brain production process. At Drupal 2012, our first film slogan of Power to Succeed is derived from this vision. Our global leading R&D, our ability in consistency and excellence in manufacturing allows us to deliver the high quality products and solutions that enable our customers with the power to succeed in their business. To fulfill our vision, visitors coming to the first film stand at Europa 2012 can expect Fujifilm to execute four key strategies. We will, number one, uh, expand our portfolio of digital printing solutions, including strengthening our in-depth in business. Number two, showcase workflow and software solutions that help printers manage print production more effectively. Number three, introduce solutions for the packaging and sign and display market. Number four, continue to invest in flight and pressing solutions uh, focused on efficiency, productivity, and environmental performance. Drupal 2012 represents another milestone in our continued growth. Fujifilm <coughs> is recognized as a global leader in these four printing segments, marker, newspaper, display graphics, and screen printing. In addition, Fujifilm will leverage our core technologies to introduce additional product innovations in live format and packaging printing. Now, my colleagues, starting with Kawaii-san, will provide specific product announcements in all of these areas regarding the Drupa 2012 exhibition to highlight how Fujifilm provides our customers with the power to succeed in their business. Thank you, Mr. San. So I'm Hideo Kawaii, so in Fujifilm Tokyo headquarters, and in charge of the global so digital business. So today, so Fujifilm, so the 
digital tool introduced our challenge of the digital digital evolution. So for key three areas, commercial printing and the package printing and the wild printing. And so what will be at our digital digital trial? It's the last four years for us since Drupal 2008. So as you remember, so the we did some of the technical announcements at the Drupal 2008. So we subject us 720. So this is the first our product so to implement our ancient technology in that. So step by step, so that we developed and applied the new technology so into that. Uh, so the last year, so we did the commercial launch. So in uh, Worldwide so much. So through the jet class, that we look at many many things. So firstly, understanding, so deeply understanding the customer demand in the field. So and also the secondary, so that we so we have some much more experience, so technical experience, how to achieve so to this type of demand of customers. In parallel, so that we should understand. So each kind of technology we should develop new so for support the current commercial market and other market. So how about the so current address? So do we try so to announce that at this moment that we've already done the nine installations in commercial banks in worldwide, not only Japanese markets, but also the worldwide market. So first customer in Canada, so digital edge. So that this customer is very excited and expected our Cypress performance. And uh, <coughs> next month, so they install these machines. In total, so my machines working in the field. So as you mentioned, that through the jet class, that we got many many things, we learned many many things. So I'm picking up the, some of the so key elements. So in the market, so customer really require the equivalent uh, quality of the offset. So because, so to expand the business with this show, so the quality quality is very important for them. So no good, so no limitation, that this is the term so highly required of the customers. And one of the key things is the former size. The B2 former size is more attractive so than we suppose. So at this moment in the market, there is a huge job, existing job, not to be able to support the A3 size. So how to maximize the opportunity for business by digital? So this is the kind of the focus and point of the customers. And one more important thing is the environment sustainability. So this is a very important world for, for us. That at this moment, uh, we got a very supportive response from the customers. So, for instance, that we have some capability. So, uh, up to the last 25 25% so carbon footprint, so by digital. And one more thing is that the inking so capability. So, that means that some the recycle so capability of the paper. So, this is a very positive and also very important. We so continue to develop so this type of thing. Based on these type of information, the how to implement so into the technology, how to deliver these type of technologies. So I suppose to introduce the three key elements so for digital inkjet. So first one is ink, and the second one is a printhead, and the third one is integration, technology integration with the police. So this time, so I'm so proud to introduce a new ink branding, so Bibidia. So Bibidia is the interest, new interest ink, so especially for high performance applications. So we prepared uh, four families, Bibidia WBQ, so for the high resolution, the same as the JPS, and uh, Bibidia WPS and WDS. So for high speed in Japan, the pigment can die. And finally, so Nvidia WBQ. So this is our new challenge. So to develop a water-based UV team for high performance UV. So right now, so I'll show the way to be So regarding 
Okay, so regarding our development portfolio, so especially for the waterways, so they are the key so important for the direction. So first, I'm clicking speed. So we're developing the stimulus response to so pigment discharging, so to achieve sort of the high speed capability, so like a web class. And one more key thing is developing the high speed flower warm-up and uh, initiator with our so chemical technologies and so to achieve to the water base UV link so for high performance. As a combination of the tools, so that we produce more various types of the UV links so for various types of application in the future. So one more key technology for us is uh, rapid formulation technologies, we call the rapid technologies. So as you see, the, our technology is a very so clear so figure so in the ink on the substrate. So this is a very important technology so to keep high quality in the substrate. So as a mixture of the ink and uh, this rapid formulation of the materials, the, we so provide a high quality in the substrate. Next, so print head, inkjet print head. So by dynamics uh, of our substrate. So the, we have a Samba technology, so it's exactly the same as a jet press uh, print head. So this time, so we develop a new technology, super non-white coating, so for long life, PCT sputtering technology, so for high accurate pseudocrate control, and the full mass architecture technologies, so also the high accurate operate control and the very so compact design, even with 1200 DPIs. So this is a very important so to produce the future printers. So today I'm picking up the very unique so one so technology, the PZT spot PZT technology. So PZT, so this is a kind of piezo, so to produce the vibration, so to eject the droplets so from the big head. So the, you can see the so two pictures at the top. So the left hand side is a general so card, so uh, piezo materials. And the right hand side is our new technology, uh, so called PZT. So you can see the very so regular oriented so material, so in these pictures. So this is the provide us a very accurate so the droplet control and a very wide so vibration, amplitude of the vibration. So that Oh, and uh, finally, so the key benefits, so consistency, reliability, and better performance for us. So from here, so I'd like to explain a more so specific so point so at the Jumbo 2012. So first, commercial paint data. Jumbo 720. So this time, also we so exhibit the Jumbo 720, so but uh, it's more powerful. And so to show you the more so good so samples uh, at the show. So the we found the schedule of the live demonstration at the show during the day. And so to give you the, some more good samples from this essence. Second, so packaging print area. So this is a brand new so for marketing point and a technical point so for us as well. So this is the top so technology displays. So we will showcase new B2 inkjet digital press for coding carton application with new summer technology and the BBDI ink technologies. The combination of the summer technology and the BBDI uh, technologies, so this is definitely so different combination of the, from the Jet Press 720. So this is focused on the coding carton application development. So uh, we also so provide you some of the live demonstration at the show. So finally, why point the printing area? So last week, so as you know, so we visited the PESTA exhibition and so also already so supplied the many, many information for the white point area. So uh, we have uh, some of the ink so brands, so UBI Jet Inject A for white point material area. So providing the new ink so to expand the customer's the opportunity so for the various applications at a job. So I want to explain some of the sort of direction the white ink. 
So if this is also the very important, so two key elements. So vertical portion is the on Genshin high speed so printing capability. And the horizontal point is the media flexibility. So at present, so that the left side of the bottom, the current cloud form a TV unit, so we supplied. And so to apply the new technology and um, to expand LED capability and the uh, low to low so flexible capability. And with a combination that in the future. So we expand the more so supporting in so package and the light level. 3D decoration and forming industries. So first I need to say so today, so one specific product so we firstly implement into the, our core technologies ink, head and integrations. Acuity LED 1600. So we implement into the head ink and also our unique Lamp working so technology by LED. So this is a very good performance. And, uh, so please see this. Uh, so to assume the very expansion of the customer's uh, opportunities. Okay. So finally, so what so we will be at the Juniper 2012? So we establish the, some of the solutions and so to show uh, at the group of 2012. So commercial printing area, so power of Jet Bus 720, and package and printing area, so brand new, so B2 uh, Inch Express for holding country as a so the close the demand management. And the one more print, so not only ink at the printer, so the regulation, the some of the regulation. Okay, so so the place looking for us so to see the uh, solution at the uh, 2008, so that it is, should be possible so to uh, provide a customer so to succeed. <coughs> okay, thank you for your attention. So we uh, are just going to uh, Mr. John Davis for work for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kawhi San. So uh, my name is John Davis. I'm business strategy manager for Boyka Solutions for Future Film in Europe. Uh, and I'm going to take a bit of time now to explain the, the range of workflow uh, products we're going to be announcing and bringing to market at uh, at Drupal this year. So I'd like to start with just going through some of the goals and aims we have with regarding XNet workflow. Really, everything we do in terms of workflow development is focused on automation, on productivity, and on efficiency. It's no longer just about technology investments by printers. So everything we put in the market has to relate back directly to profitability. And you'll see these core values demonstrated in all the announcements we're making today. So XMF is a cross-media workflow solution. It covers all forms of printing, offset, digital, hybrid, even screen printing and some of the color tools we're going to be announcing. So our focus at, with, with workflow is, is very specific, it is on enhancing print production workflow systems. If we just take a moment to look at what we currently have as a lineup of products, XMF workflows at version 4, so this is our main print production um, uh, system. We also have a product called XMF Remote. This manages the communication between a printer and its clients through remote job submission and remote approval. And this is currently at version 8. And we also have XMF Print Center, which is our web to print solution that we announced last year. This currently resides at, uh, at version 2. If we have a look here at the, um, uh, in, in terms of the, uh, what we had in terms of major sort of features behind the, um, the, the main expert workflow system, we have over 3,000 customers now um, worldwide who are using XMF as their main print production system. We have installations in over 50 countries, so we really do have a great span of a, a mix of customers around the world. And 50%, in fact just over 50% of the systems we've sold have been sold to, into competitor accounts where we've won new business. So I think this makes it clear that, uh, that XMF workflow does have some real value to customers to make them make the change in workflow solutions, which is a big change for any print organisation. And behind all of this, Fujifilm is still maintaining a high level of investment in workflow solutions. 
Last year alone, we spent 10 million euros on, on specifically on workflow developments, both on technologies and on product development. So let's start looking at some of the actual products themselves. So in terms of cloud-based solutions, we already have XMF Print Center, and we're proud to announce here at Drupal the introduction of XMF Color Path, a cloud-based color management solution. In addition to this, we have our existing products in the market, XMF Workflow and XMF Remote, and we're also announcing some major re revisions and updates to the existing uh, product portfolio. So let's start with XMF Color Path. So Color Path is a system that basically will, will profile any print device to ISO standard, given the environment that is, is, uh, is, is applicable to, to print and to the, to the ISO standard. And not only is it profiling these devices, it provides a quick and easy mechanism to keep these, these systems actually calibrated and in colour alignment, all based on our cloud-based services. And this works across all print processes, screen, digital uh, and offset. Colour Path is made up of two major components. The first one, Colour Path Sync, is our cloud-based system. This is hosted in the Fujifilm service and this is accessed purely through the web to, to various print locations. We also have Color Path Organizer. This is a new color module within our main workflow system. So Color Path itself, you create color profiles through the cloud, you manage color alignment through the cloud. There is no software to install as an end user in terms of managing color. It's all access to the web browser, even the color measurement devices, such as the, the uh, spectrophotometers, are plugged directly into the web, web browser. This means they're always delivering the latest version of the software to our clients, and they also don't have to worry about managing what levels of software is installed around the business. So at any point in the business, even if it's multi-site, the customer can come in and check and maintain color management. And we're looking to take a lot of the skill out of, out of color management. Color can be a very complex thing. But through the combination of using Color Path and the processes that we advise customers to use with the system, it's very easy for anybody who's not a color expert to maintain color within the organization, not just across one process, but across all print processes, which is becoming more and more important in environments where companies have a mixed variety of printed products. Color Path Sync, the cloud-based element of the, uh, the cloud-based system, um, is workflow independent. So yes, it works, it integrates very well with our own XMF workflow system, but it can also be used on its own with any workflow system. So this is going to be a product we're bringing to market, cloud-based color system that can work in really any print environment and bring real benefits to everyone. So next we work on, move on to our XMF workflow. So again, we're proud to announce a new version. We're now at version five, the fifth generation of our XMF workflow product. This, this actual version is packed with capabilities, but I'll just point out a few uh, here today. Color Path Organizer, I've mentioned, is a new color system within the workflow. We were the first to bring 3D proofing to market with XMF. We continue with this development, and we're now adding in more capabilities in 3D remote proofing in supporting more complex folding. So gate folds, Z folds, calendar folds. So with this can now be utilized even more in terms of an alternative proofing solution for any product that uh, essentially is being printed. We've extended our MIS capabilities. So part of, the important part of the print process is the connectivity between the MIS system and print production. And in fact, they are no longer two distinct operations. They are becoming a blend of one function within the print business. And that leads me on to Quite a significant change with, the, with version 5, and that we've redesigned the user interface. So the user profile, as I mentioned, is changing. There's no longer customer service people booking the jobs in, technical pre press people working the jobs through production. That process is already starting to be managed by some people as one job function within the print business. So we've listened to that and we've implemented in XMF version 5 a user interface that's applicable to both. It allows somebody with skills in both those areas, or not saying direct skills, but to cover both those areas with one product that allows a job to easily be taken from job entry right into the production process. 
So finally, we look at XMF Remote. So again, we're proud to announce a new version, version 9 of XMF Remote at Druva. One of the main uh, uh, areas we're using in this version is support for mobile devices. So XMF Remote, as I mentioned, is the system used between the print company and their clients for remotely approving jobs. We're now making a HTML5 web version, web interface of this product, which means people can actually come into the system and approve jobs, whether it be on uh, Apple iOS or Android devices, for quick and convenient uh, approval of jobs in production. So this not only speeds up the, the print production process, it means that anybody can essentially approve jobs from anywhere they are. But by providing such innovative tools to our printers for them to use with their clients, it's also helping towards customer retention, which again is another important aspect to, to print businesses uh, on the whole. So what we see here now is how the whole system fits together. So we have a blend of cloud-based services and local server-based local server uh, services and products. And I think in any modern workflow now, we need to have that combination. There are some times when the cloud system offers the benefits and works in, in a, a very open way. Um, so web to print obviously, needs to be cloud-based. But colour management, again, if you're talking across uh, print groups, print sites, you need to have a centralised control of colour. That is why we put colour path in the cloud. And then in our production system, we've continued the process of making our workflow more efficient from the MIS system through the print production process right through to delivering the ink on paper. I mentioned at the very beginning that we have a focus on addressing the business needs of printers, not just the technology of pre-press, but it's the business process of taking work through production. So in terms of, we look at the areas of, of a print business, in the business systems area, we integrate with the MIS systems. We have an e-commerce solution in Print Center. So this addresses the business need of getting jobs into production. In terms of job planning, most of our products have some aspect of job planning involved with them. From the MIS into the actual approval process itself, in terms of planning out what's the best way to actually print this job across the variety of printed output. That's all managed within the, the main workflow. And finally, if we look specifically at print production, we continue to have a workflow based on Adobe's latest technologies, based on JDF, and now with Colour Path as well, we have a consistent way of managing colour across the production process. So in line with the, the, the major announcement we've made in terms of workflow, we've taken the opportunity also to rebrand XMF. So as our Trooper will be working with new branding. Up until now, we've had the, the XMF workflow essentially as one brand across our products. But now we have four significant product groups that I've just been explaining to you. So from this point forwards, XMF will also have four sub-brands. And this is how we'll be promoting and help making sure that we explain the solutions clearly to our customers. We have XMF workflow, XMF remote, XMF print center, and XMF color path. So that's covered quite a lot of products, actually, in, 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 a, in a few minutes. You know, we have the four major components, we're bringing a lot, a lot of value to the market in terms of colour management, in terms of MIS productivity, and in general about efficiency and improved productivity throughout the workflow process. Okay, so that ends my, my session here on, uh, on workflow. Uh, I'd now like to uh, introduce you to, to Tony Carl, who will take you through our uh, Flexo and Offset solutions. Thanks, John. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Tony Clark. I'm the marketing support manager for Drupal 2012, based in our global headquarters in Tokyo. Uh, I'm one of the core team members planning our Fujifilm exhibition at Drupal 2012. So we'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about the Flenix DLE system, which we consider to be a simple and easy way of making Flexo plays. So we're proud to announce at, uh, at Drupal the commercial launch of our Flenix DLE system. So this is one of the items that's in your press pack. Uh, this system includes the XMF workflow, the DL25 plate setter, which is a B2 size plate setter device, and the WV1 plate. The WV1 plate is specifically designed and formulated to work with UV and water-based applications and inks. 
The event, Fujifilm has entered the Flexo space because we feel our core technologies allowed us to develop three unique capabilities in terms of quick plate making, simple two-step process, and high quality uh, results in the imaging process. I'm going to spend just a moment referring to each of these different areas. In the simple plate production process, it's a two-step process. Our DLE, uh, Direct Laser Engraving System, is designed to be engraving and a, a rinse dry system. Relative to the competing systems of laser ablation masks, which involve a series of imaging processes, high use of solvents, and a, and a complex drying process. The Fujifilm process is 100% VOC free. So we feel that the DLE system is the simplest, most environmentally friendly process for imaging of flexor plates. Higher quality, the, the diagram here shows an expanded view of the actual imaging resolution of the plates. The Fujifilm DLE system that creates our, our digital control engraving system makes for a very, very accurate dot placement resulting in an extremely sharp image, which translates into a sharp reproduction in the flexo printing process. And then finally, quick plate making. The, the DLE process allows us quick cycle time on individual plates or small groups of plates in order to get new and replacement plates in-house in on demand very quickly to maximize the flexo printing time. So we'd like to move from flexo into offset solutions. So for, for Fujifilm, we have, uh, we have objectives in terms of our plate production, and despite the migration to digital <coughs> technologies, some of which my colleague Kawaisan was talking about momentarily, we, we have three specific objectives that we have in the, in the plate and offset field. The first, develop world-class sustainable manufacturing facilities. We want to improve and expand our range of low chemistry and processless plates, and we want to promote the benefits of more sustainable plate solutions with the clear goal of developing and supporting the number one plate supplier to the world. So we start by worldwide manufacturing excellence. We have four advanced sustainable global manufacturing facilities around the world. In fact, the most advanced plate manufacturing facility in the world is located two hours away from this very press conference in Tilburg, Netherlands. We made a hundred million euro investment in the Tilburg facility on a new plate production line which went live in December of 2011. This is the European's largest and, from our perspective, the most sustainable plate manufacturing plant in the world. And we actually invite you as the media, if you are interested, that we will facilitate your ability to see this facility and see what the world's most advanced plate manufacturing facility looks like. But from our perspective, this creates an excellent platform for growth moving forward. Now, we'd like to talk about our family of CTP plates and talk about the streams in which we look at this. There's the traditional stream of chemistry-based development, low chemistry, which means to us, lower use of chemistry, lower amounts of maintenance, lower amounts of water to the, in the development process, and then finally processless, which to us means no processor, no chemistry, no water, no gum. So talking about our specific plate offerings, in the traditional space, we have the LHPCE and the NV products. We have our, in low chemistry, of our market leading PLE and PJE products on the thermal side and the Pro-V products on the violet side. And then in the process of the space, we have our most advanced plate in the world, the Pro-T3. So spend a moment talking about the Pro-T3. It was originally introduced in 2006. We saw rapid customer adoption because of the environmental sustainability aspects of this plate. We introduced the second version of this plate in 2008, and that expanded the range of presses that could be used on worldwide. Late last year, we introduced the Pro-T3 plate, which is the most advanced plate ever. There's quite a number of unique technologies in this plate, and although we have a limited amount of time here today, we actually invite you to go to our website, www.pro-t3.com, to get more detail about the unique technologies that we've developed to make this processless plate technology market leading. So, we're very pleased to announce that Fujifilm has added an additional plate to its low chem family of products. We're introducing the LHPXE plate in our low chem family. The LHPXE plate 
is a 1 to 99 percent, a 200 line, 20 micron plate. So it's a very high resolution, high quality plate. It has an unbaked run length of 500,000 impressions with a baking option that can increase the run lengths up to 1 million impressions. It is consistent with our PJE and PL, uh, PLE technology in that it has excellent ink water balance and fast imaging with 100 and 120 uh, millijoules per square centimeter imaging time. that allows you to run the maximum amount of throughput through the CTP devices. Also, because it's part of our low chem family, it's part of our ZAC system. So, our ZAC system is an award-winning high-accuracy automatic control system for processing that achieves low-cost and environmentally friendly processing. This market-leading technology, which was highlighted in the Zarwin report on the environmental impact of the printing plate, establishes Fujifilm as the global leader in this area. Relative to all competing technologies, the Fujifilm Low Chem delivers lower chemistry usage for the development of plates, longer bath life, lower maintenance, and more stable development conditions. So we think this is, it's important to point out that the Fujifilm Low Chem technology indicate it can use less chemistry than our competitors' chem-free solution. Now, Fuji is pleased to announce as well that we're further expanding our range of solutions in low chem with the addition of the XR1200F waste reduction unit. The key technology behind this is decompress and distill. So what we do is we take the waste effluent from the low chem system, we decompress and distill it, and separate it into a concentrate and distilled recycled water. The distilled recycled water goes back into the ZAC system, which actually overall reduces the amount of water that that system needs, with the end result being that the chemical waste is reduced by 70 to 90 percent over the market-leading technology that we already have in low chem. So that really concludes the product portion of our press conference. We now wanted to spend just a few moments talking about what the visitor experience is going to be when they come to the Drupal stand and Fujifilm. So this is a 3D model of what our booth looks like. And this image is actually included in your press packs. So we've designed the booth to be in, to have, have specific zone configurations. Now, we're located in Hall 8B, and we also have a presence inside of Prince City in Hall 6. Our booth is 2,020 square meters, which for Fujifilm is the largest booth in our history. To give you some perspective on that, 2,020 square meters is approximately one-third the size of a football pitch, or soccer to our American colleagues. So to give you a little bit different point of view of how we organize the booth and the visitor experience, let me show this to you in a different way. So we have specific zones relating to packaging, white format, and commercial. Within the packaging print zone, we'll be displaying technology such as the V2 folding carton press that my colleague Kalaisa announced. We'll also be displaying the Flexo technologies that I was talking to you about, as well as additional ink and plate and presser products relating specifically to the packaging, packaging print segment. In the commercial print segment, we'll be featuring the JetPress 720 product, along with our uh, CTP solutions and Xerox-based digital printing solutions, as well, again, as plate and press room solutions that relate to the commercial printing space. In the wide format zone, we'll mark, feature our world-class and market-leading technologies such as the Onset S40, the Acuity line, Acuity LED, and UV Star line of bolt presses, as well as a variety of ink and media solutions from our Euromedia division. Tying all of this together, we have the workflow solution products that John Davies was mentioning earlier, showing the integration across different print processes and color management across the various print processes. We also have a technology leadership zone. Fujifilm is a world leader in R&D. And we have, we'll be actually showcasing specific examples of printhead technology from our subsidiary Fujifilm Dymatics. And they'll be showcasing how that technology has a variety of specific print market applications. Finally, we have the Power to Succeed exhibition area. So with Fujifilm being involved in all of these different segments, packaging, commercial, wide format, we wanted to come up with a way that created a dynamic visitor experience. So we've created three different companies and what will happen is as the visitor comes through, everything that they see within these companies is enabled with Fujifilm print technologies. 
So the visitor will actually be able to immerse themselves in this experience, and we have iPads and QR codes that allow them to scan and interface with that and get a much more rich experience and figure out how we will cre create the power to succeed for them and enable them with Fujifilm print technologies in their business. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like uh, for, to turn back over to Graham Leeson. So um, I hope you agree that uh, just, just how strategically important Fujifilm is used in graphic arts business. Um, you know, in terms of our strategy of covering those three markets of promotion, print, wide format, and packaging, we're investing a lot of money in those areas and, and obviously introducing our products. So just in summary, uh, the, the, the eight major announcements we're making are a new range of high performance inkjet inks for video, a new V2 folding card of digital inkjet press, a new installation of the Jet Press of Digital Edge in Canada, and nine worldwide now, a new XMF Color Path Color Management Suite. Uh, new updates to our XMF workflow and our XMF remote product, a new long run low chem plate, and an expansion of our low chem systems to include a chemistry reduction unit and the commercial availability of the Flenix V2 system. Right, um, that concludes our formal presentation. I'd like to uh, open up um, to any questions if, if, if uh, anyone wants to brave to be first. Hello, this is Joe from Super Week. Um, what more can you tell us about the packaging uh, Has it got a name? What kind of substrates can it print onto? How many colours? So at present, the, we will showcase the packaging, the inkjet plus for polymer cutting, the four colours, so 1200 dpi. And the similar plus the draw press size of the Jet 720, so the minimum is a uh, Lost uh, two picolitres, plus to ten picolitres, so the, to achieve so to the very similar high quality of the offset and the general subject. Michael Wittenhouse from Miss Works Germany. Uh, can we talk a little more about the uh, new card press? You announced that it will be available in 2013. Now remember that uh, when the um, Jet Press 720 was introduced in 2008, some people said it would be available next year, which was uh, 2009. So. Can we come back for the we were really 2013? And the other question is, uh, could you enlighten us a little more how you will introduce this? Because I mean, normally you have a kind of test, a beta test, an introduction in Japan, and two years later it goes to Europe. Will it be the same with this press? Question. Also good question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you will know that. So uh, we so the review the Japan Central is the announcement. So that we need a long time. So but the big difference for us is uh, we actually so to the some of the technical hub for our channels by the movement. So the baseline technology is uh, very similar the world. So that this time the we so the make efforts so to more quicker so to develop uh, this type of the whole card and packet press. And uh, some of the plans so before launching uh, this machine. Uh, it's still under uh, some consideration. So we've already started uh, some of the discussion with customers, but I'm still uh, quite by uh, some of the schedules about it. So, uh, so there's uh, some timing, so that we can get about that. So uh, you, you raise a very good question, because Drupa is traditionally been a platform for announcing strategies and technologies and things like that. And very, that's very fair. So as part of the development process for what we would exhibit as Fujifilm at Drupa, we made a conscious decision that products that are on the boom at Drupal will commercialize within two years or less. So we made a very serious decision in terms of excluding certain types of technology and developments that we're working on because we didn't feel that they might not commercialize within that window. So we wanted to specifically address that type of inquiry because we introduced this technology at Drupal 2008 and it took a little bit longer to commercialize. So as part of our group of preparation, as part of what you've seen here today, we specifically make decisions about commercialization windows that are much more realistic. Okay. Um, Kevin O'Brien, American Printer, Upwood Lakes. Um, my question, since I am less familiar with the Plexo market, uh, I was just wondering, can you clarify what Fuji's uh, prior uh, participation has been there? I know, uh, I guess I'm familiar a little bit like on the wide format side, but can you uh, uh, 
give some highlights. So let me answer it strategically and then specifically, okay? Uh, what Fujifilm has, has done is we have a number of core technologies and a number of core strategic directions in terms of when we introduce products to the marketplace, they're usually driven by certain criteria such as it needs to be market-leading quality, it needs to be an environmentally sustainable solution, right? It needs to be something that we can manufacture to a global high standard of excellence, right? So when we looked at the, the Flexo printing space, we see it strategically as a diversification strategy in terms of how we as a global organization build a sustainable business for our industry. And because we have these core technologies and polymer technologies and things like that, it was a logical extension for us to look at the Flexo space. Now, to get specific about what you were asking about, Catherine, we identified with the DLE technology that we could deliver that exceptionally high quality, that we could deliver a more environmentally sustainable solution in that space, and that's why we made a decision to enter that space. So in reference to what we announced today, in your press packs you've got specifics about the DL25 and the, and the new plate. That is just the first introduction of what we're bringing into that space. And you know you should expect in terms of our strategic move that we will continue to expand that space in terms of format size, additional plate types, ink technologies, because these are all core areas that Fujifilm can bring value into that space. Then have, I, have I answered your question? Yeah. Okay. Hello, I'm Antip Tatu from, from Turkey, Madman and Liquid Medicine. I'm here. Yeah, uh, we saw Jet Press uh, two years ago. Uh, our some readers watch a uh, demo and say that this is a good technology. We can buy it, but it's very expensive. Did you solve this? investment cost problem. I, I think from, from our perspective, uh, and I think Keith, that this might be an area for you as well, is uh, it's really about the total cost of ownership for us, right? With the jet press technology, it opens up a new range of printing applications. And because of that, it changes the dynamic of what the end print pricing model is. And that's what we've really seen in terms of those nine sites that we've dealt with around the world, is that they're looking at this as a changing business model for them. And as a result, it really is an investment. It's a very, you know, it's a significant investment and a strategic investment for their business. And part of the process for us in working with them is identifying what their unique capability is in that space. Because those nine printers do a lot of different types of printing. They're not all doing the same type of general commercial printing. They have specific niche applications that they've identified and developed for their business. So for us, it's really not about the cost of the press. It's about the total cost of ownership and the business plan for the new range of digital print applications that this technology brings. All right? Printing business. We go on, on to the card press again. Who do you conceive as being the kind of usage you're going to be looking for and what kind of packaging are they going to be producing? That's the first. Well, so the, some of the customers visit for us. The, this moment, the holding carton package, so for example, so very so easy box or some, some of the... Some of the uh, mm. Yeah, the, sorry. So the main, the main so package the printing companies, so currently so we use the offset print, so printing press. So the current situation for them is a uh, short term so job is uh, extremely uh, increasing. And uh, so the stock so problem is occurred, so because the type of the job is various and the uh, short term job is increased. So we have the so many many type of the stock so they have to have. So the additional also equipment is expectation so to remove the this type of subjects so the for the packaging uh, companies so who using the offset digital press. So this is an alternative market. So what, what sort of runs are we talking about as a short run that be within the scope of this machine? 100, 100 cartons yes. or 500 yes. cartons or? Yes. So the, yes. Yeah, the, those customers that we visited is uh, from 100 seats, uh, 300 seats, so less than 1,000 seats, so that we have many, many jobs. Uh, and if I may to add to that, 
Uh, one of the things that Kawaisan talked about was the Samba printhead technology. And, and what we think is really key about that is it delivers offset equivalent quality. Right, so part of your part of your question about the B2 folding press in terms of what the potential marketplace is, it's for that part of the packaging business that needs offset quality, but it wants the flexibility of a digitally printed solution. Right? So one of the things that we're recognizing with this technology is that printers are inventing new print applications in with the jet press technology in the commercial space, but we anticipate the same thing is going to happen in the folding carton space. I can finish there, but certainly um, Tony, John, Kawaisa and myself are around tonight if you want to ask any uh, particular questions. Uh, we're happy to fill those questions this evening. Um, I would encourage you, the, 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 the brochure in your, in your packs uh, printed by the Jet Press is stunning in terms of quality and colour gamut, so please check that out. There are some posters uh, for each of you. If you have to take, we'll take some of those out outside. Uh, and please take one of those away. They, 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 there are three stunning YouTube posters in there. Um, finally, we will of course be making other announcements in the lead up to Drupa and we look forward to sharing these announcements with you and uh, inviting you individually to come onto our stand at Drupa um, and, and share with us uh, the, the, the new products that we have there. So thank you, thank you for your attention.